in search of a perfect yet not so expensive truly wire earphones for calls, I settled for the OnePlus Buds Z after watching numerous reviews. But was the sum of all those reviews and my decision correct in the end or not? Let's find out as that's why I've made this video. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So the OnePlus Buds Z mostly has great reviews on it, but more than enjoying music or videos, my priority was to have uninterrupted smooth calls on it. As I was truly frustrated by my dongle and sometimes wireless is more hassle free because of the fact that it doesn't have any wires. Well, in the box, you get the earbuds with its case and two more different sized earbuds and a short charging cable and that's it. Well, I tried to be unique here and I got the grey colour, but I was sceptical at first if it was the right choice or not. But it turned out really nice by the end. I mean, it doesn't even look very grey and it just looks a tad less white. And now I suddenly realise that's what grey is. The case design is quite basic, like a thick capsule, like a fat capsule. But the case does feel of good quality. The battery status indicator on the front is quite bright, which I dig for all the good purposes because who doesn't love bright things? And on the back, there is a USB-C port and a hidden button, which when pressed shows the battery status on the front of the case without opening up the case. And to be honest, this is something which I found out very late as it's quite nicely hidden with the overall form of the case. The earbuds are magnetically stuck inside the case and the right and the left markings are there on both the earbuds and the case. Well, to be honest, in the beginning when I started using uh, the earbuds, I felt the cutout shape to be quite confusing but got used to it within two weeks or so. When I opened the case for the first time, I anticipated the pop-up menu with which it would connect with ease to my OnePlus 8. I mean, which is a huge convenience and which was also mentioned by a lot of reviewers. So that never happened in my case and I had to manually connect these uh, via the traditional method which made me feel like I lost at least a couple of hundred bucks worth of my purchase here. And by couple of hundred bucks, I mean in Indian rupees, not in US dollars. The biggest mystery when I first started using these earbuds was to actually understand that the inbuilt software is not a separate software which will automatically uh, come in your app drawer, but it was just the Bluetooth settings when you connect these earbuds with the phone. So I totally felt like a noob. You can customize the limited tap controls of each bird here and also see the battery status of each bird and the case separately. The default codec settings was set to AAC and when I shuffled between it and SBC, I couldn't hear any major difference from these. These earbuds felt quite comfortable in my ears and for reference, this is the dimension of them. The left one for some reason kept falling out of my ear and that has already happened at least four or five times. And that kept happening even when I replaced the medium sized ear tips with the largest one. So I guess that's enough for the drop test as they dropped several times and they didn't break. So yeah, drop test. And this also made me realize that maybe, just maybe, my left ear hole is bigger than my right ear hole. I mean, just maybe. But this is something which has never happened in any of the earbuds or earphones I've used in the past. But I can easily wear these for a long period of time as they don't really hurt my ears at all. So yeah, I would say in the end that OnePlus has done a good job in this aspect. Well, weirdly, when I was purchasing these or when I was hunting for a good TWS earphones, my priority wasn't great sounding earbuds. But I was really surprised with the quality of the sound of these 10mm drivers provided from the earbuds. These are definitely slightly bass rich earbuds and as I'm not a hardcore audiophile, I can't really explain all the different uh, arrays of lows and mids and highs. But overall, as a conclusion, for a listener like me who mostly listens to trance, these sounded great. For rock music too, they sounded wonderful and the vocals sounded quite punchy and clear too. The trebles or highs aren't that sharp till you fiddle with the equalizer on those third party apps on the phone. I mean for 2500 rupees, I really can't say they sound terrible or anywhere near to a pair of bad sounding earbuds. And no matter if it was a regular voice call or calls on WhatsApp, Telegram etc, the vocals of the caller from the other end were always clear and crisp. I mean, in most of the calls, it never felt as if the voice coming from the other end was tiny or just had too much treble on it. And they always had this rich balance of lows and highs on them, much like how these sound usually with music. So I could totally rate them almost 10 out of 10 for this. 
Now coming on to the main reason for which I bought these earbuds, the mic quality on these have behaved pretty nicely in my overall experience for about a month and in most of the scenarios I've used them in. You can also use alternate earbuds individually for calls if you are into a lot of calls every single day and can't afford them to run out of battery completely together at the same time. I made sure to include several tests just to show you how these would sound at the receiver's end uh, from a variety of applications you might use. And this is a WhatsApp call only the ceiling fan is on, the air conditioning is off, there is no traffic noises around me and someone is trying to play a game uh, sitting across me and apart from these there are no noises. Uh, so this is how the mics will perform during a WhatsApp call in a similar situation. So again the ceiling fan is on, the AC is on and someone is typing across me and a random traffic noise is being played uh, very near to me. And this is how the mics will behave or during a WhatsApp call with noise around me. So again, only the ceiling fan is on and the air conditioning is off and there are no traffic noises uh, around me. And this is how the mics will behave and perform during a telegram call. So this is how the mics will respond during the telegram app. Uh, the AC is on, the ceiling fan is on and someone is typing across me. Uh, this part of the video has too many horns. Uh, so I hope this myth of a test is enough uh, to see how the mics behave uh, on the Telegram app. So currently only the ceiling fan is on uh, on top of me and the air conditioning is off and someone is trying to play a game across me and apart from these there are no other noises, no traffic noises and this is how the mics will perform during a Google Meet call. So again the ceiling fan is currently on and the AC is on and someone is typing across me with a random traffic noise uh, playing behind me. And this is how the mics will behave on Google Meets. Let's check out the other app. So currently there is no traffic noises around me and the air conditioning is on, just the fan is on. And this is how the mics will perform during a Microsoft Teams call. And this is the Microsoft Teams. The ceiling fan is on, the air conditioning is on, random traffic noises are being played and someone is typing across me. So this is a Zoom call with no noise around me, just the fan is on and someone is uh, typing very rarely across me and the air conditioning is off and the no traffic noises. So yeah, this is how the mics will be behave and perform during a Zoom call. And right now in my room, there's a fan uh, which is running on top of me. Someone is typing behind me and uh, there's an AC also running with a random traffic noise video on YouTube. So this is how the mics will work uh, in a Zoom call. Okay, so this is a normal 4G call and there's a fan switched on on top of me and there's nothing else around me. So this is how the mic will behave in a uh, noisy environment. The AC is on, the uh, traffic sound is on, the fan is on and this is on a normal 4G call. You must have noticed during these samples that the call quality was really solid and the noise cancellation works really beautifully too from the mics on these earbuds. Well, to be honest, the biggest drawbacks on these is their limited touch controls. The tap response is quite average and there is a definite delay too from the moment you tap the earbud to when the app will actually respond to it. Or it's just that I have not gotten used to them. The other major drawback is that you can't hold on to them to increase or decrease the volume or anything similar of that sort. So that's a, that's a huge letdown. Basically, that means you'd always need to rely on your phone or the other device this Bluetooth uh, earbud is connected to. In my experience, the wear detection has also worked only 7 out of 10 times, which is not very efficient. As this can also vary if you are standing up or if you are sitting down, I have mostly observed that when you are standing up, the ear detection uh, has a higher chance to be efficient and work most of the times. So yeah, as you can judge, the controls on these are pretty bad and I'm pretty sure that OnePlus sacrificed to expand the controls features on these just to make sure to keep them under budget for many and yet achieving this great sounding drivers on them with a great uh, calling experience too. Well, talking about the battery, the battery backup on these is pretty good. I have noticed at least two and a half hours to three hours of usage backup from these birds. No matter if I was on calls or if I was listening to music on YouTube, etc which is quite decent considering the case can also hold for 50 mAh of charging which can charge the earbuds 4 or 5 times at least or at most. Well, I also tested the 10 minute fast charging claim by OnePlus on these and in about 12 minutes the earbuds were charged to about 40% and the case was charged to about 30%. That's about 70% of portable charging in your pocket in just under 12 minutes for the birds which is super impressive. 
But yeah, I use the 30 watt warp charger which comes with the OnePlus and I'm not sure if you can make good use of this ultra fast charging with any other non OnePlus charger. And if you're someone who has tested this on these earbuds, do let me know man, do let me know. But trust me, like all the other truly wireless uh, earphones I have bought or tried in my life, these aren't quite bug free too. Bug free, bug free, bug free. For example, sometimes at the same distance from the phone, the voice from the other end will randomly start breaking, but sometimes it will also be stable as hell too. As a quick fix for this, I have turned off the Bluetooth and turned it on immediately and this uh, works most of the times. But that can get annoying sometimes, so yeah, don't be annoyed man. You didn't pay 10,000 or 15,000 or 20,000 or 200 US dollars or 500 US dollars or 300 US dollars for this. Well, oddly, even after being Bluetooth 5.0 compatible, I could notice a delay sometimes on the YouTube app. And it saddens me that this keeps happening in the year 2021 too with most of the truly wireless earphones I have used. And I'm not quite sure why many reviewers won't state this when they make their reviewing videos because this is certainly a problem and I have tried all the things to fix this and this keeps coming back. So I had to just fix this. I simply just tap to move forward or I rewind the video and it just in most of the cases fixes this little bug which I face sometimes. So this means that you should forget a good experience on this if you are expecting to buy these for competitive FPS gaming, that, that's the trend these days. The delay was almost around 200 ms in my test which isn't favorable for games where you would like to compete. So I don't expect much from these for gaming. But for other casual solo playing games, these would be just fine as it's still not tough enough to beat those bots. So yeah. So as the title suggests, are these the best calling earbuds one can get right now for the price of 2500 rupees or 3000 rupees or for about 50 US dollars in the US? And I would say hell yeah, despite the many drawbacks I stated throughout this review. I mean, except for mainly falling short of having more controls on it and a little uh, less buggy nature would have been preferable, which to be honest is still a trait of many truly wireless earbuds. The OnePlus Bud Z excels in all the other aspects and many of the aspects came as a surprise. So if this review helped you in any way then do leave a like and sub with the bell or even better you can buy me a coffee so that I can make more honest content for you here by getting more stuff, buying more stuff. <laughs> you can also hop on to our discord server for chit chats on more relevant content. So stay safe humans, that's all for today, Mewbot out. Ah!